We talked about every yesterday. Let's give a quick review. Every is a predicate in Lodash that you can throw a bunch of things and say, yo, are those bunch of things true? In Lodash report, why yes, all four trues are in fact true. If even one of them is considered false E, not just false, but false E, JavaScript term, then it returns false. Some is a lot more flexible. Some is like, hey, dude, is at least one of those things true? If so, great, true. So you could have three things be false, and as long as one of them returns true, some's like, yeah, it's true. So how do we use that with predicates? With every, we determine that the main things have to be there. So let's take a gander here at a restaurant we could get from MongoDB or any NoSQL database. If it's unstructured data, it may or may not have it in there. A lot of people, myself included, treat NoSQL databases as just an easier database. It's a lot easier to add data in there because you don't have to have a schema. You don't have to set up anything. You just get up and moving. But the data tends to be very similar. I'm adding restaurants to the same API, so they always have the same fields. And assuming I'm validating it, they're all going to have an ID, name, city, rating, and timestamp when they're created. However, there are times and part of the uses of NoSQL databases being unstructured is that you can port it from other places. You can parse it from different types of data, and you can even migrate it from older relational systems that don't need to be relational anymore. So you might get some data that's not quite the same and nasty. You want to validate against it. We're going to use every and some together to make some hardcore assumptions. you got to have an ID and name, but having a city timestamp or rating is optional. Let's go ahead and add our predicates. I'm not going to write them with you. You've already done these before. We've got a legit date, which verifies it's a date, timestamp, which go ahead and says, if it's a string, cool. If it is, let's attempt to create a date out of it and parse it. Same with the string and number. The actual validity predicates on the ID looks legit. Get it. And if they return undefined, the legit string is fine with getting nothing and saying false. We safely get our IDs, our names, our timestamp cities from this object or series of objects and return true or false. All these functions do is confirm yes or no without throwing errors. There is no yes, no, and boom. It's just yes or no, true or false. Let's make a confirmation of the validity. Let's say restaurant has required fields. The required fields are just these two guys. So we'll say restaurant has required fields, and we'll use our good friend every, and we'll pass in the two predicates that it needs. The first is a valid restaurant ID. It has to have that. Second, it has to have a valid restaurant name. As long as it has those two, made sure that it has the required fields. It's not yet a valid restaurant, but it's close. We'll get that predicate. The second parameter, by the way, is a callback. So you can use this short syntax, or you can use a function. I don't care which. The item we get is not really an item. It's actually a predicate. So you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it to what it actually is. It should return that the restaurant has the ID and the restaurant has a name. Simply just get the predicate in there and return it. So that'll get our required fields. And we can run this against our restaurant here. Restaurant, do you have the two required fields? So far, so good. We've done some required fields. Now let's do three more. These are optional. The timestamp city and rating are optional. So we'll do restaurant has Instead of required, these are optional. It still has to have one optional field, at least one. So we'll, we'll say restaurant has at least one optional fields. Some for that one, because we only need one of these to return true, not all three. We'll copy the exact same syntax that they have, except instead of these two predicates, we're concerned with, does it have a valid timestamp or does it have a valid city or does it have a valid rating? So we've done three predicates, same exact way. Hey dude, this function, which is going to be this one, this one, and this one, run all three, run it against O and verify it has at least one of those required fields. If it has that, we're good. Say a valid restaurant has to pass these two things. It has to pass this, that has to return true and this has to return true. We need, we need to have at least one optional field. So now we've got both, short circuit. Now you can use every if you want, or you can just do the short circuit, it's up to you. Both work. Log this out, add this guy to our restaurant. Say, is restaurant a valid restaurant? True, it is, fantastic. What if we remove the city, so the optional fields predicate isn't matched? 
So sum up here returns false because it doesn't have even a city. So that returns false. So we'll add that back and we'll change Jake's place to a blank string, which will trigger legit st string not firing because it doesn't have the required length of being greater than zero. So that's false. So we can see that all our predicates are working. We can run a bunch through every, but sum gives us more flexibility to verify at least one is matched and you can use them together. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use sum to validate a lot of data, run a bunch of predicates, and as long as one of them is met, you're good to go.